well. We, we thought at one point the uh, defensive tackle Alex Van Sumeren. So he was, uh, man, a top target and commit. He's decommitted. We're talking about top 15 defensive tackle, uh, top four player out of the state of Michigan. So that had a lot to do with his brother's decision as well. Yeah, definitely had a lot to do with his brother's decision. I was really interested to hear, to, to see that happen. I think some people expected his brother to do that, but they didn't expect, um, didn't expect Alex to, to decommit. Um, it sounded like he also immediately got a, uh, an offer from Arizona where Don Brown is former defensive uh, coordinator for Michigan. So maybe he's following Don Brown. I know that Ben Van Sumer and did like Don Brown and they were pretty close as well. Um, but I think that, uh, you know, that is a big hit for Michigan. Especially, it was interesting to see that after what Sean Nua has done on the recruiting trail in the past three weeks since he was retained and since uh, Mike McDonald was not was made the uh, the the defensive coordinator for Michigan. Sean Nua has has offered and gotten a lot of traction, crystal balls, and everything else from a lot of different defensive tackles. So you kind of thought that was trending in the right way for Michigan. But now th this one, it looks like he's not, you know, it's not trending in the right way for Alex Van Sumeren, especially right after it came out that he was over 300 pounds, actually, uh, in his last weigh-in. So he would have been a huge jolt for Michigan, I think. I've seen him uh, play as well. For a 300-pounder, he plays running back for his high school team uh, at some point uh, of their games in this past season. So that would have been a big one. I think it'll be a bit of a big loss for Michigan as well. Um, but I think that now with a new defensive staff, they will still be um, – they'll be okay going forward. I think Sean Nua is making a big splash on the defensive line. Uh, they've got Aiden Hutchinson back on the defensive ends as well. But, um, you know, that was a concern. The defensive tackle position was a huge concern for Michigan that last year and moving forward in the future because they didn't have many recruits. So losing him, not great, but it seems like it may have been – a. Uh, not great fit with Don Brown uh, leaving and Mike McDonald coming in. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, breaking down the game we all love each and every day. Best discussion, debate, and analysis. That's at least our aim, goal, and mission. Justin Rose on the line from a Stadium and Maine podcast. So check it out and follow Justin at uh, on Twitter at JustinRow92. So we got linebacker Adam Shibley, who was pressed into action, played five games, three starts there, transfer portal guy now, even though it appeared as though with Cam McGrone, Cam McGrone gone, that he might have more of an opportunity in Ann Arbor. Yeah, I think what we're seeing now is a new line or a new coaching uh, staff come in. Mike McDonald and Brian Jean Mary are both going to co-coordinate the linebacker position. So they're probably making a splash right now to say, okay, well, we, you know, they're probably coming in with a different type of defense. We've heard that they are going to come in with a three-four instead of Don Brown's four-three. So that will be something different that uh, that these linebackers are seeing. So maybe they don't see a spot for Adam Shibley. I also think he was thrown in there as a former walk-on who earned a scholarship. Um, Lance Dixon is a Penn State, former Penn State linebacker who uh, Michigan has their eyes on. He's a former West Bloomfield kid uh, where new coach um, on the offensive side of the ball for me come in from West Bloomfield as well. So um, I think that um, those connections are all factors into Shibley's uh, decision here. Um, no offense to Adam Shibley. I'm not sure he was going to make a big splash in 2021 as, on the, the linebacking core, especially if Lance Dixon is going to come in. Uh, you know, I've, there's there were crystal balls immediately after Lance Dixon entered the transfer portal to Michigan. Um, he is waiting to make his decision for a while still. Um, but I think that the, Adam Shibley probably saw the thing on the wall. We also hear that uh, West Virginia quarterback uh, Dreshawn Miller, who had 31 tackles last year in a pick, has ties to cornerback coach Maurice Lindquist, and so there's some rumblings there. Yeah, Maurice Lindquist is making a hell of a splash already in his first couple weeks uh, in terms of recruiting. He came in, landed two four-star corners, uh, commits for the 2022 class, uh, and now if he can if he can land a, a transfer portal kid in Drayshon Miller as well, um, it's going to be pretty incredible. So um, I think that's what, what, you know, 
what we've seen from the defensive side of the ball with this staff is recruits, 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 which it seems like Mich or Jim Harbaugh in Michigan, that's what they wanted to come in. They wanted a younger staff that could really, you know, vibe with these recruits and get them going, uh, get a different culture into Michigan instead of Don Brown, who is in, let's be honest, he's a little bit of a stubborn old 65 year old man. You know? And so they're going very much younger on the coaching staff, and it seems to be working for Michigan in terms of the recruiting trail. Um, not only are they landing commits already, um, but there's a chance that uh, that Will Jackson uh, will come uh, as well in the 2021 class. Damani Jackson, or sorry, Will Johnson. Damani Jackson, who committed to USC, the five-star corner uh, out of Detroit as well. Um, there's been rumblings that now with a new staff for Michigan and Will Johnson trying to get him to come back. So we'll see how that goes, you know, with a guy that's already committed and signed, it's tough to say, uh, but who, who knows what, what goes on there. So um, I think that, you know, it's just, it's one of these things that I've been wondering, uh, Mark, is what is Jim Harbaugh's, what is his goal with this new coaching staff? Young culture guys, you know, between Mike Hart that's been there for, you know, he's obviously an alum. Um, they've got guys on the on the defensive side of the ball as well that are coming back and, and that have been around the program before. What's his goal? It seems to be that he's trying to get better recruiting. He's trying to get a better culture, more lively, a little bit just different juju coming in in Ann Arbor. And it seems like it's working because um, whatever they're throwing at these kids in terms of a recruiting pitch, it's working already. And so it'll be interesting, though, to see how does that translate onto the field? You've got a lot of young coaches that are coming in now that have not seen much coordinator uh, experience in terms of calling plays on both sides of the ball. Uh, and so it'll be really interesting to see how that plays out in 2021 when it comes to actually winning football games, which has been Michigan's biggest issue.